Welcome back everyone. As always, I'm Dan at Trim Shoe Repair and Key Shop. Now, we've just hit 20,000 subscribers. Such a milestone for our wee little channel. So, thank you so much all you guys. I couldn't have done it without you. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Now, to mark the occasion, we're doing a more laid back, chilled out video today. I've got my apprentice Jack in helping me with the videoing. We're going to do a walk and talk tour of the shop and a Q&A. Enjoy. Okay, everyone, we're here at the shop in Tring, which is half the shoot in the UK. It's right in the middle of town on the high street and it's a bit of a miserable day today, so let's hurry up and get inside. Okay, so when we're at the shop, first thing you're gonna see is our couple of bay windows. We've just got keys in this one by a little sea of keys. And of course, if you ever look here, our old favorite George, who you must have seen in every video. George was actually found in a basement, but now he's the talk of town. Okay guys, welcome once again to Tring Shoe Repairs from a point of view you don't normally see. So one thing you might notice is that uh, here we're a shop rather than just a workshop like a lot of places. So we have the customers coming in. This is a customer space. And on this side of the shop, this is where we've got our shoe care shelving. So all of your creams, polishes, cleaning products, they're all here. This shelving is quite cool actually. It's um, When we moved into the shop, it was a bit of a DIY job. We had to make a lot of stuff. So these shelves are homemade from just timber that we got from the uh, builders merchants and recycled scaffolding. So if I turn you this way, just spin around, jump. Uh, this is the key selection board. So we also do key cutting. We have got about 6,000 keys here. I know that because I counted them. So next, in between these insoles and these belts, nothing particularly exciting. We've got our passport photo booth on a cool spinny chair. So this is where we take passport photos, which I haven't done any videos on because it's not that exciting to shoot, but maybe I'll do it soon. And if I just point you over here, this is what you're gonna see as a customer. And this is the main counter where we'll serve people. And you can see the machine in the background. Just before we move on, all of these celebrities here are celebrities that have come in once to have their picture taken. I'm just joking, they haven't been in once. They've been in twice. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous, we've got the automatic polishing machine. And just before we move on, I want to show you this cool little thing. I've got my framed autograph picture from Angelina Jolie because I actually fixed her pair of boots one time for a movie she was shooting on. A close friend of mine's a costume assistant and hooked us up. Cool, so as we come through here, first thing we've got is my cool little barrel, my pirate barrel. Now this I actually found on uh, eBay, picked up. It's fallen to bits, refurbished it, and it's just a nice big workspace. I can put jackets over and any awkward jobs that I need a lot of space for, it's just handy. So, if we come up this way, this is behind the counter, you lucky people, of the key cutting area. So of course, we've got all our key stock up here. As I said before, we've pretty much got every key you could ever need. If we haven't got it, we can just order it in from the suppliers. And the various key cutting machines here. Uh, this is my small little, just have a look at this for a minute, Jack. It's my watch repair area, such as it is. Not too uh, extensive, but it gets the job done. Uh, if we head down here, this part of the counter comes all the way into the shop. This counter, as I said, we moved into the shop. It's a bit of a DIY job. We had to make this counter. We made this part of the counter in uh, during last lockdown in the springtime, just so that we could get some uh, get the keys in the window, so people knew we did keys a bit more. So what we're coming to next is a very important bit of kit. This is our Victor outsole stitcher. So if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that an outsole stitcher is what we use to stitch on leather soles. There's other ways of stitching, there's other machinery. In fact, we have other stitches, but they're over at our other shop in Leighton Buzzard, so you don't see them too often. I will show you soon though. This trophy shelving here, we sell trophies, plus we do engraving. Now, as I said, we built the counter up into the window, put keys there. This trophy shelving used to be twice the size and actually up in the window. So the backstory behind them, but we moved them down here. Okay, now I would say you're lucky to get a behind the scenes shot, but as my loyal subscribers, this is what you normally see, me and my work area or behind the counter. So we've got a few things. Uh, this is just where I'll be getting all the jobs done. We've got this exciting job on, which you'll see in the next video. This is my trusted singer patcher for putting zips in, 
patching up its spooks. It's probably about 70 years old, so it's a little bit older than me. If you're a very good customer, lollipops. So we've got this cool bay window. When we moved into the shop, we did all this DIY. I said this window was completely blocked up. So we opened it up, get all this nice daylight in. Customers can see what I'm doing. It's just a bit of fun. These nice Edison bulbs we put in just for a cool little touch. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is our machine. Where's Jack going? Do you head over there? There we are. This is the heart of the shop, the shoe repair machine. It's a 700 finisher by standard. Pretty popular machine. What you've got to be careful of, you'll always see me wearing the apron, so don't get messy. This is a very dangerous bit of kit. You've got to make sure that your apron doesn't get sucked in the machine, which I've seen happen to a poor chap called Andy once. So uh, hopefully you survived. Rest in peace, Andy. Right, so let's kick off the Q&A. Quizmaster, question master Jack. Steve S asks, Regarding cobbler's tools, are they all antiques you have to scrounge from other shops or can you buy it all new? Uh, good question, Steve. A bit of both is the answer, really. If I just take you over here, um, so a good example, the outsole stitcher we looked at earlier. These things, these are antiques. Most people have old ones because to buy them new, they cost thousands. I think the last time I looked, these were about 10 grand. So you really want to get a secondhand one, look after it. And um, if you look after them well and oil them, then they, you know, they keep going for years and years. Other things, I'll just show you my, my tool. What I've got here, I don't know why you can see that. This is called a fudging wheel, you know? And sure, I scrounged this from somebody else that I used to work with. So you can still buy them new, but there's a lot of cool old things that you don't see nowadays. So it's good to collect stuff. All right, so what we've got next. Daughter of the King asks, I wonder what happens if you put your hand in the presser? Put your hand under the presser? Good question. Let's find out. Okay, cool. So if I just spin you around, we've got what here is the uh, engraving zone. So we're doing engraving trophies, pet tags and things. Check out the key. Meow. This is our big cylindrical engraver. It's called an IS200. And flat bed engraver. And this is where I keep all sorts of dies and things for doing the shoes. So just follow me over here, Jack. Uh, and we've got this cool little tool station with all the funky things. I'll do a video on tools another time, but what I can show you is we've got this cool wallpaper, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Suitcase wallpaper. It's actually designer wallpaper, bloody expensive. But uh, what can I say? I've got a thing for suitcases. Jeffrey Goss asks, these JR soles must be good. Every cobbler raves about them. Are they more comfy or do they just last longer? Yeah, well, I've got some here. JR soles, definitely the best on the market. I mean, they've been really successful just through I don't want to say hype, but they're just very popular, which has got, which has gained the company and the soles a lot of momentum. But they are really well made. When leather soles are made, they're uh, tanned in pits. Um, they usually do this for about six, eight months. JR do it for at least 12 months. So that's what gives it the superior quality. Answer is, yeah, they're definitely more comfy. You'll feel it. And they definitely last a lot longer. So it is worth the extra money. Uh, for the next part of our tour, I'd like to invite you to follow me through the back. So essentially just behind the machine, we're in the back area. Where we've got our extra stock shelving uh, just down here. This is, uh, we've got a bunch of mail order jobs waiting to be done. Well, this is uh, cool. I'll just show you over here. Pop over here, Jack, and get this. You'll have seen in my sort of About Dan video, the jet truck, Oklahoma Willie, my dad's jet bus. I'll put a link in the description to that thing if you want to see some more of that action. Pretty cool. And of course the kitchen area for preparing food and washing muddy boots. Paul Charnwood asks, if you're into fitness, have you ever tried CrossFit? No, I've never tried CrossFit. It's never kind of taken my interest too much, but what you guys might have seen in one of my previous videos, the About Me video, is that I have competed in Strongman before, which is uh, similar to sort of heavier weights. Um, and I play football, which is more athletic, so you could say CrossFit's a bit of a mix of the two, so I'd probably end up being quite good at it. So. Uh, you've given me an idea, maybe I'll have a go at it one day. Right, so next on the tour, we're heading out the back and into the cellar. So like I said, it's a 200 year old building, so we've got this kind of quirky old back passage. So follow me. So here we've just got more storage space. It's where we have secret parties. But uh, what's cool is the cellar. It's really creepy, so if you're brave, we can head down there. Actually, just one second. I need to show you, a lot of people ask me how I manage to keep up with all the work. The truth is, I can't, I have help. The elves help me at night. And if you look here, I can show you where they live. This is their house and you can kind of see where they've been coming out at night. Okay, next question. 
Bastion asks, what is the hardest to work with, suede or leather, and what is your favourite job to do? Leather's easy, you can always refurb it, and you can start from scratch, patch it up. Suede's difficult because if you if you damage it and get stains on it, it's hard to do anything with, uh, with suede. That's what what do I like doing? Any any big job, big leather jobs, let's jump one down. You know, full full leather soles where they come out looking nice are always fun things to do. Or um, you know, it might be rubber, it's a nice pair of day nights we did the other day. Right, so here in the cellar, you've got to mind your head a little bit. It's cold actually, isn't it, Joe? It's a few degrees colder down there, which is cool. We just use it for storage and sometimes ghost hunting. Ooh. Right, so one for you history buffs. This is really cool. See this cavity, this gap here? This is what's called a priest hole. And our priest holes was back in Guy Fawkes times where the Catholic priests would hide when they were under persecution. So it's, you know, Really interesting, a bit horrifying to imagine those sort of times. Um, guys, I actually just need to show you something. There's, there's a really weird noise coming out of the priest hole. What is that? Oh, Mel Gibson? Ah. What are you doing here? Ah. Next question. Okay. Airborne Prepper asks, not sure how I got here, but I feel like these are Kingsman recruitment videos. They are Kingsman recruitment videos. What a cool movie. Um, yeah, any new students we get in, coming in, we take them out the back, we've got a button, press a secret wall, and we have our secret, what am I trying to say, wall full of weapons, and we teach them in the fine art of dressing nicely for shoes. Remember, Oxford's not brogues. What do you like, Jack, Oxford's or brogues? Mm, Nike Air Maxes. Nike Air Maxes, wonderful. In my rear view mirror asks, have you ever received a shoe you couldn't fix? Uh, no, I can fix everything. Just kidding. Of course, yeah, there's loads of things that can't be repaired. I've had customers bring in nothing but just a shoelace with a bit of leather hanging off the end. And you're like, is this meant to be a shoe? But um, you can do big reconstruction projects. You can salvage a lot of stuff, but some things just aren't made to be repaired. Peyton T asks, what do your tattoos represent for you? I noticed one of them is red. My tattoos don't represent anything to me, honest. I've had this one a long time. I just got it because I was 18 and I wanted to feel like a gangster. But there is a little story behind it. I drew it, which makes it unique, and my friend, the tattoo artist, uh, transformed it into a tattoo. This one's red because it had some red on it initially, but I've actually been getting it lasered off, which I can tell you, the most painful thing I've ever had, so don't do it. But um, I'm actually converting this one into a sleeve at some point, so maybe we'll make a, make a video on that. I'll take you guys with me to see. Right, so to finish up the video, it's a good time for me to show you the outside of the, the edge of the shop because we're heading out the back to program a car key. So let's get cracking. Right, so from the front of the shop, we're heading round the edge down Aiton Street. This is where the pub is. So we've just got a bit of signage on the edge of the shop there. And if I show you at the top of the building, there's actually um, a signpost to the local museum, which is actually a really big museum full of uh, stuffed animals, like a natural history museum. Carry on down here. So here, looking in, is the bay window I was speaking about earlier. There's no one in there at the minute because we're outside, believe it or not. And then as we head to the back of the shop, this is just guest parking spaces and where I'm working on customers' cars doing car keys. And now we're done, we can head off this way to the pub. Didn't see you there. I've got another question. Ah, wonderful. Paolo asks, can you put toe plates on a lady's size four Oxfords? Yes, absolutely. Toe plates come in all sorts of different sizes. What we've got is um, the Lulu toe plates, which are really popular. They come in nice small sizes, so you can definitely put them on ladies' shoes. Okay, next question. Jojo asks, would you like to share any gym workout tips? Gym, yeah, sure. I knew there'd be a gym question in there somewhere. Um, the problem is there's so much knowledge and advice you can give about training so it's hard hard to know what to say but we'll do some general things that anybody could do so um, what you want is a routine something that's gonna that fun and gonna keep you going to the gym because you need to be consistent to get any sort of results so a routine is important next would be when you're in the gym training you need to do exercises properly with uh, what's called a full range of motion so say you say it's like a squat it's all the way up all the way down even if you have to use less weight do that uh and next i'd say would be protein you need to eat enough don't worry too much about food just eat enough to grow 
or if you want to lose weight enough to lose weight but protein always nice high protein is essential right so i believe this is our last question zat prince asks can you please make a video about smaller jobs and prices Yep, good idea. Like, like you said in another video, we'll save that for another time. But what I will say is all the videos you see me doing here are the big, cool jobs that make good videos. And of course we charge good money for them. But I get, like I said earlier, this is a shop, not just a workshop. So I get lots of walking customers, just on small jobs, you know, the 10 pound, 20 pound, but you guys in the US, so you got $25, $30 jobs, uh, gluing, stitching, you get loads of them in. So I'll do a video showing you more basic stuff that we do. Okay, Dan, last question. Uh-huh. From me. From you. Tell me something funny that happened recently in the shop. Uh, one that springs to mind straight away is a lady of a little girl came in. Bear in mind, I have my uniform, my red shirt. The little girl said, Mummy, the man looks like a tomato with cool hair. <laughs> And that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed me answering some of your questions and a little tour of the shop it gives you a bit of a different look to what goes on here at Tring Shoe Repairs. Now, uh, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, hit like, it helps other people see this content. If you're new, subscribe to the channel, doing new videos every week. Uh, I'll finish off by saying mail order jobs. If you're somebody that wants something repaired, contact us on the Tring Shoe Repair and Key Shop Facebook page, and we can talk about your job. And that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time. Oh, so Perse persecution. Persecution in Guy Fawkes times. Look at his mum. Sharon! Muscles here. <laughs> this mid production has snapped the tripod. Great power comes great responsibility. I do. Leave me alone.